Hey guys, um, welcome to my uh, second processing tutorial. So, in this tutorial, I'm going to go through some um, processing basics. So, if you remember from my last tutorial, we went to processing.org to download it, we installed it, and just went through some basic stuff. Um, today, we're going to start a new sketch and um, we're going to start playing around with some of the processing functions. So um, I'm going to start off by doing what I did last time. I think I'm just going to um, put up the size of the font a little bit more today. Let's put it up to maybe 20. There you go, it's completely readable. And I'm just going to change their memory preferences again. There you go. Okay, so let's start off with some basics. So as I said um, from the last tutorial, um, you have a void setup function and a void draw function. And within the void setup function, you've got the size, and so you specify that. And remember, last time I played it, and it draws a box. Um, other variables you can put in the setup function include things like the background color. So you can also put that in draw. It's up to you. Um, the best thing to do is actually specify background in draw because otherwise well there's not really much point of putting it in setup so we're going to stick it in draw so I'm going to put the background color to red you remember you got the three values red, green and blue if I show you a direct representation red, green, blue that's where all three of them will go so re remember red, green, blue and what I'm going to do is just put it as red. So we put 255, that's a maximum amount of red as we can put into our, let's call it a palette. <laughs> um, we can put 255 in red for our palette. And we're going to put 0 and 0 in here, which is the green and blue values. So that will generate a red background. And we've got a size 400 by 400 box. So what we're now going to do is, like we did last time, we drew an ellipse. So I'm going to draw another ellipse and it's lips I'm going to make it black. So to make it black you just put no colour in at all. Just like switching a light off. So, um, oops, sorry. So I'm going to make an ellipse. And in this ellipse I'm going to make the x and y coordinates width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. I'm going to make the um, size of it 100 by 100. So we should have an ellipse in the middle of the screen and what I'm going to do is also fill that ellipse so processing works rather like a timeline so by filling that ellipse I'm going to put a zero that means it's zero 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 you can also do it with one value as opposed to three but it will come out with the same result okay so this works a ti on a timeline principle so here I've drawn a picture of a timeline so I'm going to draw a circle here and then I cut and then I um, call the fill method um, and then draw a rectangle over here which one do you think will be filled the rectangle or the circle now logically it would be the rectangle and it is it is the rectangle um, it, it wouldn't be the circle at all because it's working on a timeline principle so when you call the fill the fill function, it kind of waits until the next object is being drawn and then fills that and anything after it. It's basically changing a variable for a fill color. So if for example fill was called here, fill was called there, it would fill the circle and it would fill the, the rectangle as well. But let's say it if fill two five five zero zero was being called before the circle and then just before the rectangle we had fill zero two five five being called. So let's just move that down a bit. Yeah, so we've got this is red, remember RGB values, that's green. 
So this would be filled red and this would be filled green. So that's how it would go. It'd probably be a sharper green than that, It'd probably more like that. Um, so if I can show you this in processing, at the moment you see our fill colour is um, at the moment our fill colour is zero, which is black. So let's just change the background to um, 255, which will make it white. Um, and then change the fill colour to red. If I fill and then draw an ellipse, it will change that ellipse to red. Now if I fill after this, fill 0, 255, 0, which is green, and then draw the same ellipse, that maybe let's move it height divided by four, so it just be above it. You see, we get um, a green ellipse and a red ellipse. But this is basically how the concept works. So, like I said, this is a timeline. So the timeline starts from here and then goes down to the end of the method. Anything can that draw function. So even if you're calling a function from outside of the draw method, sorry, I'll keep the same terminology. Um, even if you're drawing, if you're calling, even if you're calling a function from outside of the draw function, in in the draw function, it will run that still as though it's draw, like a timeline. So if we, if I explain here, you got background, so it runs that. So it says, okay, set the background color to 255. For the background actually what it does, it overwrites everything, it kind of wipes the board clean. Um, so if I was to run background after all of this, you'll see straight away that it will just be completely white and you won't be able to see anything. Whereas when I'm running it before, it allows all of this to be run and won't overwrite it until it comes back to here. In which case the frame, um, in which case it's been refreshed anyway. So these will overwrite the background. So it's kind of like a layering system too. That's the other way to see it. So you have to manipulate the timeline in order to create a layering system. Just like piling books one on one on each other or creating a collage. It's quite interesting. Um, okay, so the fill color on this has changed to green here. And then when it comes back around, it changes it back to red and draws that red one. So really, if we were to do this in slow motion, um, you would see that it would be flicking extremely fast on and off. If you look at my mouse, actually, when it's on um, when it's on the sketch, occasionally you'll see it flickering. There's a bit of a glitch there, but that's practically what it's doing. It's refreshing this over and over and over and over again. And you can actually set a frame rate as well, so how often you want it to refresh. So if I press play, you can see it's loading really slow now. You see how long it took to load there. I don't know if you can do frame rate 0.5, but hopefully that's a... What I'm going to explain is what there actually is in Ellipse. So let's look at the X and Y coordinates. This is how it is. That's the X coordinate, that's the Y coordinate that's the width and the height of the ellipse. So if I can pro um, PowerPoint again and show you another slide here. So what we're going to do is I'll just quickly get rid of that. Um, get this here. So if you look at this, that is a 50 by 50 or probably about 100 by 100 ellipse, that, uh, 100 by 100 circle because we specified the width and the height as 50 as 100, 100. Um, so what we want to do, if one's creating an ellipse maybe this one here would be 50, 150, 50 in width, 150 in height. So you can specify width and height in processing for the ellipse function, which can be very useful in a lot of ways. So, an example of this. So X position, we'll put that at 10. Y position, we'll put at 10. Width and height, we'll do, let's say, 20, 10. So 20 in width, 10 in height. So we'll end up with something looking like that. 
just like this. So, if we just press play on that, you can see it in the corner up there. Might be a little bit small. I'll put it to 100 100 and then you'll be able to see. And I'll just change the fill colour for you as well to make it easier. Oh. Oops, sorry, that's X my position. Then. Let's leave it there then and then change it. Sorry. It's so 200, 100. Times it all by 10. Should be a lot bigger. There we go. So this is our new ellipse. Very elliptical just shape, kind of like that. Okay, so that is the ellipse. Um, there's also a rectangle you can play with. Rectangle, I believe. Has should have four values. Let me check. So yes, um, here's a good example. Here's a good example in on the processing website. Um, the rectangle has the x coordinate, y coordinate, width, and height, just like the ellipse does. So the x coordinate we'll put as 10, the y coordinate we'll put as 10 again so it'll be drawing from the top left corner um, put the fill colour as black because the background's white and then we'll um, sorry I have to specify width and height sorry and we'll specify the width and height as 50 50 and then we'll draw it you see we've got a nice square there so I'm just going to put in a background as well. So the background's actually white. And there we go. So we've got a white background, black square. Um, the other shape you can make on the 2D plane in processing, because there is a 3D plane we can play with, but I will go on to that later, is, I believe, a triangle. You have six. You have six coordinates for the points on the triangle, because we're working with three points on the triangle. So let's do twenty twenty. Twenty twenty up. Twenty twenty. Sixty. Twenty. And thirty. 40, 60. So it should draw a triangle like that on the page. Because the first coordinate, x and y, because that's what that represents. x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. Um, the first coordinate, 2020, is this top corner here. 6020 would be the next corner here. And 4060, sorry, 4060 would be this one here right at the bottom, that is the bottom point of this triangle. What about if we wanted to increase the size? How would we go about that? So obviously for a triangle you just end up having to space it. So put that to 100, you see it should get a bit longer. So why not space out this bit and put this to 200 and maybe keep that as 20 because that will still be in the top. So 200 would be over here somewhere and then where we've got 100, we want to put it down to maybe 200 as well so we end up having a nice triangle probably like that so let's just see that yep, so we've got an interesting triangle there and we'll change that to maybe 100 you'll get yourself a nice uh, even sided triangle so that's um, an interesting concept and the other things you can do is um, maybe move the triangle around so where we've got a point at 100 on the x-axis here maybe we could change that to mouse y so it ends up moving like that so when we move the mouse y the triangle will change as well and maybe we can move it to mouse x oops mouse x and we can just move it like that so it just follow the mouse that's literally what it's doing, following the mouse. Um, so you can do quite a lot of it already just by 
having it set up so that variables can change. Now let's say we didn't want to use triangles. There is other ways to do it. This is a bit of an advanced um, function actually that maybe I, I shouldn't be going through so early. We can use a function called begin shape. Begin shape. And then in that you can draw vertexes. So let's say you want to draw a vertex at 20, 20. And let's say you want to draw a vertex at 15, 20. Or another vertex at 67, 58. Or another vertex at 64, 67. You can just keep going on. Um, or another vertex at 200, 800, 800? No, that's too much. 200, 400. So that'll go right to the bottom, right to the side. Um, probably about over here, maybe down there, where my mouse is now. Um, so if I end shape there, I'll just show you this. It's created a really weird shape there. So what about I didn't want it at 400, I wanted it at mouse X. Let's see how that goes. Well, that is interesting. You see it creates this really odd looking sort of effect as though it is 3D. Although we're not even in drawing in 3D, you can get these really awesome 3D effects just by doing it in 2D. Okay, so that's that's a quick introduction to vertexes and begin shape and end shape. So just looking these up in on um, finding it, finding it in reference on um, processing, processing and .org even. And what else is in temporary files it is straight online here. So we go to um, it's just oh that's still in the file. Proce just go to processing.org and then go to reference and it should just be here where it says vertexes. It's got begin shape and end shape. If I show you that, it's got all these different examples. They're very useful. Okay. So um, that's a little introduction to the setup and the um, draw function and um, how to manipulate them. In my next video I'll be going through how to use functions to keep your code tidy.